we've just figured out better and better ways to source and ultimately this is about sourcing like this is nothing to do with selling selling on amazon has nothing to do with selling it has everything to do with the way that you find products and how quickly you find them and how quickly you're able to process them and it's a game and the better you get at it the more money you're gonna make hi and welcome to your selling podcast i'm your host nikki kirk aka your selling guide I'm a small town girl who took a big risk and quit a steady corporate desk job to travel the U.S. in an RV. Along the way, I started selling on Amazon, grew a seven-figure business, visited all the lower 48 states, bought a farm, and today I am still doing what I love to do, selling on Amazon while helping other sellers do it too. Each week, I will share Amazon tips and tricks and bring in guests to share their stories, expertise, and tips on the platforms that they use. Think of this as a sit down with your Amazon bestie where you can learn, ask, start, and grow your online selling business. Welcome to Your Selling Pod. Hey crew and welcome back. On today's episode, we have seven figure Amazon seller, Pedro Bermudez joining us. Now here's the thing about Pedro. He grew his Amazon selling account to that seven figures in just 18 months. I am so excited for you to hear his story and learn how he's helping other sellers grow their business as well. So with that, welcome Pedro to the podcast. Welcome Pedro to the podcast. Hi. Hi, Nikki. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you because you have been selling for quite a while and you have like experience in all different areas. So I can't wait to dig into that some more. So before all that, how did you get started in online selling? What was your life before all that? Um, Okay. Well, I mean, I got started, I would say, over 20 years ago. So I initially started on eBay, and um, I was just basically selling retail arbitrage items. Um, So I don't know if you remember back in the day, when Tickle Me Elmo was like the hottest thing. And I remember seeing, um, you know, on the news that people were going crazy for it in the US and I'm in Canada. And at the time, you know, nobody really could care less about Elmo in Canada. And uh, I saw, I realized, and I recognized the opportunity, um, you know, to pick something up in in an area where nobody cared for it and sell it somewhere else where people were fighting over them. So that's how I got you know, my first taste of online arbitrage or retail arbitrage. It wasn't even online at the time. I've done a few other things as well. You know, I I, I used to sell DVDs and Blu-rays on eBay. And, uh, you know, I did it back in the day when you had to physically buy the the items. Uh, You couldn't download them or anything like that. So I lived in a city where DVDs and Blu-rays were relatively cheap. And I was able to go to the store with a little notepad and just write down every name and title of every kind of hot DVD and, and CD. And then I would go home and list it on eBay. Uh, and then, you know, the next day after I got all my sales, I would just take the bus down to the store because I was just, you know, I was just a kid and uh, buy those, those DVDs and Blu-rays and then just mail them out. It was that basic. And that's how I got my start. Um, and I did that for a few years. I bought into the whole, I have to go get a career and do that thing. So after I finished university, I went and got like corporate jobs. And then I did that for many years and I didn't do an e-commerce again until 2015. And that's when I really got things going with Amazon. So you didn't do it kind of part-time or on the side while you were working in the corporate life. You just went all in on the corporate so I did. So I was working for Coca-Cola bottling and that's when I did the DVD Blu-ray thing and the Tickle Me Elmo thing. So that was a corporate job. I was in the sales team there. Uh, then I kind of stopped because I got into like a more serious, you know, corporate gig. I was working for like a big mining company that sold underground mining engines. Uh, and uh, I couldn't really do it. And I, I, I was making really good money. So it just didn't even make sense to me. Like, you know, making, I was making too little relative to my salary. Um, But I was also working a lot of hours and I had a lot of pressure. Um, Around 2015, that's when, you know, I wanted to get into it more seriously because of just the threat of corporate treachery, you could say, right? Like company will fire you for whatever reason You could be like the best performer and it wouldn't even matter. Um, You're just a number to them, right? And when they want to cut 
cut headcount to save money for their investors, they really are pretty ruthless. So that's when I started looking at e-commerce more seriously as a backup plan. And it started as a hobby. Uh, I was, again, I got back into eBay and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this more seriously. And, and we got the eBay rolling like really good. You know, like we were doing 20, $30,000 a month in sales, but it was a lot of work, like a ton of work. So I figured, okay, this Amazon thing looks interesting. And I was inspired by seeing a lot of people on the internet on Instagram, on Facebook, just posting that they were doing $100,000 a month or or whatever. And I was like, is this even possible? So I decided to try it. And uh, at the time, we had a really booming eBay business. And it just didn't make sense. Like my wife and I do this together. And she kind of said like, ah, oh, you shouldn't bother. Like we're making money here. Like why would you bother with Amazon? But I just kind of kept through with it. And I was very persistent and I kept going and going and going. And I slowly grew it to the point where I was like, okay, this is a real business. And that's how we got things kicked off. And I was doing that while working full time. So it was totally yeah. possible to do it. Did you, like when you picked it back up again, did you set aside like a certain amount of money that you were going to invest in this new business or was it kind of like just throwing money at it as you went? So I was lucky enough to be making a little bit of money from my eBay side hustle, right? So I was sort of, sort of speak, I was playing with house money because, you know, we were selling a lot of used items that were really low value for high profits. So I would say like when I... When I first tried it, I, I probably threw in about $2,000 and I didn't make any money from it. Like I, I pretty much lost it because I just didn't know what was good, what wasn't good. I didn't really do the work to figure out if something sold or I just didn't know the basics. Like you really got to know the basics or you're, you're going to throw your money away. How did you like, how were you sourcing back then? Were you just kind of like, hey, that looks good. I'll throw it on Amazon. <laughs> Well, okay. So the first time, the first thing I tried was online arbitrage, which was probably a mistake. Um, I just literally went on walmart.com and I was just looking, oh, let's look at this product. Uh, copy, paste, title. Oh, it sells for the same amount. Okay. I can't make money. Next product. And I would do that for hours at a time. And it was not very productive at all. Um, and I think that the stuff that I did buy, I bought just because I was like, okay, I got to buy something. Like I got to be, an, I can't say I'm an Amazon seller if I'm not buying something to sell. And I remember buying a bunch of GoPro accessories and, you know, they didn't sell and they weren't going to sell because the data wasn't there to support it, you know, um, <laughs> and it was silly. Oddly enough, a few years after we were selling on Amazon, we were able to sell those because they became discontinued and there was, for whatever reason, more demand for them. But um, you really got to understand what drives sales on Amazon before you dive in. Um, I, I Luckily, I, I'm not a quitter, so I kept going. Um, and that's when I got into retail. So it was easier to go to the store and just walk up to the clearance shelf. And, you know, it was a big red flag. Or I actually, I shouldn't call it a red flag, but it was just a big sign that you could potentially find a profit by arbitraging those items. So buying them at, you know, Target or Walmart at a much lower price than they were selling on Amazon. And it was easy enough to check to see what the price delta was. So that's how we got into that. And we got good at it, you know, and we enjoyed it. So that's, you know, that's what really gave us our start. And we didn't have a huge amount of money. Like I said, we started with two two thousand dollars. We probably didn't make much or any with it, but I just kept going at it. Um, you have to be a little bit resilient in this when you don't know what you're doing, right? So we kept going, and uh, it eventually picked up, and it started to work, and it worked really well, uh, especially around you know Christmas time, because um, just there was so much activity around the website that tons of visits, and we were getting sales left, right, and center. So it was really inspiring. Nice. Yeah. If anything, selling on Amazon, you have to be ready to pivot and change like at a moment's notice because it's just 
it's wild all the different things they throw at you. Yeah. So when you finally kind of like figured out maybe retail arbitrage is better, how did you evolve and are you still doing retail arbitrage or do you do wholesale or private label or any of that kind of stuff? I'll, I'll do a little bit of retail. Um, if it's like really easy, like if it's just there, um, I haven't done it for a long time. Uh, so our progression was this, we went from retail arbitrage to online arbitrage, and then we went to private label. So I've, I've launched several products as well. And then I'll do wholesale as well. Like if it makes sense, um, wholesale is good. Uh, just, you have to keep in mind that when you make mistakes in wholesale, they're like, it's the same as making a mistake with online or retail arbitrage, but just amplified. So if you're not ready to lose $200 on a bad retail deal, don't get into wholesale because that won't be a $200 loss. It'll be a $2,000 loss. So um, everything works. You just have to kind of find the the piece of it that, that works really well for you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So do you do kind of a mix of it today? Is it like kind of a little bit of everything? It's, I do mostly online arbitrage. So oh, nice. I just find that the types of deals that wholesalers offer up for Amazon sellers, they offer to everybody. And when they offer it to everybody, there's such a low barrier of entry that it's just really difficult to make a profit on it. So I will only do wholesale deals when it makes sense. Now, Online arbitrage, as you know, is very different because, you know, there may be regional supply in one region and huge demand somewhere else, you know, in an economically kind of backward area, they may have a lot of stock of something. And if you're able to source it, you just buy it all and send it into Amazon and you're not going to have competition or not very much of it. So it's it's really finding those little micro inefficiencies in different places that really allow you to have a sustainable business uh, with an actually decent profit. So I can't get excited about a wholesale deal that makes 63 cents a unit. Like I just don't okay. care. I'll pass. I'll let somebody else fight for that. You know, like I want to make, you know, $18 an item, $8 an item all day long, 100 times a day. That's what I want. You know, and uh, the whole space, wholesale space, it's just unless you get a very exclusive brand deal, it's just not going to happen. Not for most yeah. Amazon sellers. And that's just the reality. It's it's very difficult. So I once upon a time took a course, which was just at the end of the day, a waste of money. But they were teaching wholesale and it was like a model that maybe was profitable back in the day, but brands are very aware now of Amazon sellers and what they do, tank the price. Yeah. And so they degrade the brand value. And so it's a lot harder these days to get wholesale. Not impossible. Like you said, yeah. there's things out there, but it is a lot harder. And so um, definitely have to work your way up to it. Cause like you said, there's the loss is massive. I've taken quite a few losses on just toy pallets that I've bought that I was like, Ooh, that was yeah. a bad buy. And it, it adds up. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, some of these guys that are selling the the wholesale courses will tell you, oh, you just got to build a relationship with the supplier. What does that mean? Like, does that mean that I have to sell at a loss for five years before they look at me differently? And like, to be honest, that's not really what I what I need. What I need is to make money today. So I just found that online arbitrage is the way to make money today because it's predictable. You're not doing pre-orders. You're not pre-ordering something hoping that it's going to get listed on the Amazon catalog, hoping that it's going to sell in seven months or a year, hoping that it's going to get there before Q4. It just, it just doesn't make sense, right? What I do now is I see a deal today that I know I can turn in two weeks and I'm going to get my money back two weeks after that. And that makes sense to me. So I know you said you guys are like fully remote now, you and your wife. Does that mean, are you using a prep center here in the U.S. or one in Canada or both? Or how are you doing? Yeah, that? we have multiple prep centers. Like we have prep centers, depending on where the supplier is, it just makes sense to have one, you know, East Coast, West Coast, Southern United States, parts in Canada. You know, it's cheaper for me to prep in Canada, a lot of stuff because of the discrepancy in the U.S. dollar, uh, the you know, the trade difference there, uh, exchange. So 
it, it just depends really where the item is and where we're getting it. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a warehouse anymore. I didn't want to have the responsibility of having to pay commercial real estate. Uh, I didn't want to have staff. Uh, I just wanted to not be an overpaid warehouse worker. So that's because when you're an Amazon business owner, like you could do that. It's basically, you know, you have a warehouse, you have the space, you have to manage people and you have to show up every day and receive your stuff or things don't get out as fast. Right. But I just chose the prep model. Uh, I've modeled a lot of eight figure Amazon sellers and a lot of them have gone from having a big, you know, 20,000 square foot warehouse to having prep centers and they just have a better life. And that's, that's what we wanted to do as well. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but I used to RV around and travel. And so I really got into like, oh my gosh, if I can do, that's why I started the wholesale course and all that. If I could do wholesale and not have to like physically have the stuff that would be amazing. Um, it didn't work out for me at the moment, but I still have those dreams to eventually do that because I want to know like how much you're working on your business, the Amazon selling part of it in a typical week, because it seems like you've got a pretty nice life going. <laughs> yeah. So what? let me tell you, when I first started this, I was working full time at a corporate job and doing Amazon full time on top of that. But I was only able to do that because I loved it. Like I really liked the process of finding deals and, and analyzing everything and making, you know, making purchases. And then I even did the prep. Like it was insane. Like I would go to bed at two in the morning every day, you know, one, two in the morning, just doing prep and Saturdays and Sundays, I would work, you know, all day, all afternoon, but I loved it. Not a lot of people can do that, but I also didn't have to do it very long. So I haven't touched a product in years. Um, and because of that, I have a lot of free time because a lot of the time is really spent prepping. Um, we've really fine tuned our sourcing models uh, to be able to find products predictably every day. So every day we want to make a buy, whether it's a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. I can spend five grand today. Like I have the capacity to do it in terms of you know available product to flip. It just depends how much margin you want to take. And I'm getting picky now. Like I only want you know 20, 25 percent margin and up. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Uh, but if I wanted to flip money faster, I could take less. Um, uh, but yeah, like right now, the way things are, we've spent around 15 hours a week doing this. It used to be more, but we've just figured out better and better ways to source. And ultimately this is about sourcing. Like this is nothing to do with selling. Selling on Amazon has nothing to do with selling. It has everything to do with the way that you find products and how quickly you find them and how quickly you're able to process them. That's it. Yep. And it's a game. And the better you get at it, the more money you're going to make. And that's it. So we figured out this game and we figured out how to source properly. Like I have a background in sourcing. So that gives me a lot of insight. Um, and because of that, you know, we've been able to scale this to the point where we can buy our time back. So I don't do any labor. I don't do any admin. This is all done, you know, through third parties. Um, all I do now is really just make decisions about what we're going to buy. Q4 is here. It is the best time of the year as an Amazon seller. But if you don't know what's going on with your profits, your money, your business, do you really know if that business and product is making any money? This is why I love Sellerboard and why I've partnered with them on the Your Selling Podcast. Sellerboard truly is the best way for an Amazon seller to see their true business, how much profit you're making on a product, and better yet, why I love it. It forecasts out your total sales for the month and you can see by quarter, by month, or by the entire year, how much money your items are making you. We all know different things come up in Amazon business from returns to various Amazon fees. All of it is broken down in seller board because like I've said, if you don't know your business numbers, you don't know what's going on. And as new small business owners, we often, that's the area that gets fallen behind because we truly don't totally understand it. So why not use this software to fully understand what's going on? Sellerboard is offering my listeners two months free, no credit card required. All you gotta do is head to yoursellingguide.com slash sellerboard profit and sign up. Again, you just log into your Amazon account in Sellerboard and everything is pulled over, including all your past items you've ever had. 
enter in your cost of goods, and finally you will see the true profit picture of what's going on in your business. Again, try it two months free at yoursellingguide.com slash sellerboardprofit and really understand your business this Q4. Do you have um, like virtual assistants helping you source products or find things for you to look at or is it kind of all you guys? So I used to, uh, but I don't have virtual assistants for sourcing at all. And my my reasons might sound kind of silly to some people, uh, but I just... I know that a lot of those leads that are found through virtual assistants are either leads from other virtual assistants because they're all friends and they trade. They're just making their lives easier. What I do use virtual assistants for are admin work. So, I mean, all of my pricing errors, all of my stranded inventory, all of my reports, all of that sort of admin work, they handle for me. Smart. Now, what I would use a virtual assistant for is wholesaler outreach, right? Because we talked about mm -hmm. how challenging wholesaling, how wholesale is, right? So, you know, I don't want to write 100 emails or make 100 contacts a day to try to maybe find one wholesale supplier a week to then scrape through their catalog and see if I can find something. So that I'll use wholesale. Uh, that I'll use virtual assistants for uh, because I particularly hate that. Like, I just, yeah. I can't get excited about it. I just want to look at the deals. That's my thing. So you kind of started the business. Did your wife join you right away? Or was there some uh, friction there? There, there's, <laughs> Yeah, there was some spousal resistance for sure. Like, she thought I was wasting my time. Because when you first, when you first start anything, you have to be ready to be a fool, right? You have to be mentally prepared to suck at it. And you're never going to get better unless you start. So I think a lot of people never start because they, they think they're going to suck at it and they don't want to fail and they don't want to be the fool. And, you know, I'm fine being the fool. So I, I sucked at it. I was horrible at it. Like I said, I, we were making money with an eBay business and I was taking that money and I was losing it on Amazon basically. Right. So it took a while to get better at it. But once we got it, you know, things suddenly changed. Like we barely do any eBay now. I think we just do eBay for our damage returns or um, just broken items. Um, but yeah, I mean, she passed. She went from having a full time job as well to just working on Amazon full time. So that's awesome. Yeah, but I mean, it, it like in anything, like. In this world, like if you don't try and you don't do it, and it's it's really repetition. Amazon is, you know, it's the most repetitive game you can think of. And I think that I was able to break through that point where, you know, you're making a little bit of money. And I was able to break it because I was so obsessive about it. And I just kept pushing out boxes. I made a game out of it. You know, I, I talk to people about volume of work required to to make an Amazon business into a seven figure business. And, you know, I ask people like, well, how many boxes do you ship out? And they're like, you know, I got three out and I'm like today. And to me, that's even low. Right. And they're like, no, all week. <laughs> I'm like, what did you do the rest of the week? Because you really need to push out a, a pretty significant amount of volume to be able to get to multiple seven figures. And, you know, I, I was just very focused on being able to do that. And again, Amazon rewards work. This isn't like a regular nine to five job where you're going to get paid your salary and you're done. You push out an additional box that day. That's literally, you know, at, at least for us, it's about $600 in profit. So how many $600 boxes can you push out in a day? And it's really just a game of how much you want it. Um, again, once you caught, once you cross that threshold where you, you have like a stable amount of money in the bank that you're able to invest in deals, you can really buy your time back. I never was able to appreciate that until I got to that level. Yeah, that's, that's really smart. I like the way you're phrasing it too, of buying your time back. So you were still working corporate when you started. How long until you quit that job? Probably about four years after, like right around the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, it just made sense. Um, 
I was able to keep both for a very long time, uh, but it just made sense to just, you know, sever ties and just focus exclusively on one thing. What about your wife? How long until she, or did you do it at the same time? Uh, no, my, my wife actually quit before. Um, my wife is actually a lawyer oh, and, nice. uh, yeah. And, you know, we have, we have young kids and we wanted to make sure that we spent you know, as much time as we could with them. And really when we started the Amazon business and it started picking up, then it was, it wasn't really required. Like we had a two income household at that point when we had Amazon and eBay and you know my job so it wasn't really needed and uh she wasn't really having a lot of fun with it so it just made sense for her to go first um and then she actually became you know our in-house sourcing expert like she really enjoys the sourcing process as well and she got you know really good at it very quickly ma mainly because you know she had seen me make all the mistakes and I was able to say hey like this is how you read this this is how you interpret that so you know, I really coached her to really become an expert sourcing uh, person for Amazon specifically. So it's funny, like now she can look at a product out, out of the side of her eye and say, this is good, I'm buying it. And she'll go out and buy, you know, $1,500 worth of it or $3,000 worth. It doesn't matter, right? Like We just know. Um, and, you know, this this business really allows you to live a very flexible lifestyle. You know, the day you don't want to source product, you don't have to because, you know, the next day there's going to be another pipeline of opportunities. Every deal is a moment in time. So one of the things that took us a little while to recognize was that deals come and go. And just because you don't buy it today doesn't mean you won't be able to buy it in a few days. Or something else that's similar to it. So. It's it's a mathematical certainty, right? Yeah. There's 500 million products and probably variations make it billions. And you only need to find a very small subset of that to make money in this business. We literally live off the crumbs. You know, as soon as you, you see that, then you can just have a really relaxed kind of lifestyle because there's always going to be a new opportunity coming every day. Yep. So do you see um, your kids growing into the business eventually or? Yeah. So like my, my daughter has told us that she will never work for anybody. So she, she grew up in the household as we were ramping this up. So I remember like talking to her and saying, Hey, like showing her little bars on the screen and saying to her, Hey, you know, we're going to sell a hundred dollars a day. And she thought that was amazing. And then it became a thousand dollars a day. And then it was three thousand dollars a day. And then five thousand dollars a day. We've had thirty five thousand dollar days. So to her, just money is just something that you can make unlimited amounts of. So she's not fettered by the thought that she has to go get a job. Uh, she starts university in the fall to study business, but she has been very clear that she's not going to work for anyone because she just thinks it's a waste of time. And she's had a very privileged upbringing the last seven or eight years. So she saw us going, she saw us going from having to wait till the 15th of the month to buy groceries because we were topped out because we had like mortgage payment, insurance payment, this payment, that payment to being able to do whatever, whenever. Right. So right now she's in florida she wanted to go to florida to visit her friend we just sent her to florida and it doesn't even cost us anything it's just on points right so that's the kind of lifestyle these kids are living now because of our amazon business that's and because awesome. of that their entire framework has been shifted as well so they don't think of money in the same way that i used to think of money yeah, and that's I'm great. Really happy about it, right? Because I used to be the guy that just like, no, we got to hold on to the money. Now we got to hold on to the money. Money almost becomes like a game when you have an Amazon business because you're just turning it over and over and over again. And my kids have seen that. My son has seen it too. Like he's really young still though. Like he's only 10, but I think to him, it's very clear that you can achieve anything you want in life as long as you just focus on one thing and you just do it and you get better at it and you learn from the mistakes and then you keep doing it and get better and better and better and better at it. There's nothing that really hold you back. Yeah, that's awesome. That entrepreneurial drive is 
huge and that's great that your kids have it because it gets, get, feels like it could go either way right they could be the entitled or have that drive to never want to work for someone which is awesome yeah. i mean that is the goal that's how i've always felt like like you i had to work i did the i initially started out like oh i'm gonna climb the corporate ladder you know how it was back in the day and unfortunately when i came into the career that's no longer a thing you people don't promote people anymore and so it just didn't work out for me. But at the end of the day, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and do my own thing and not work for someone. So yeah. it did work out for me <laughs> in that aspect. No, for sure. Um, yeah, I think we're all brought up thinking or being told that, you know, if you work hard in the corporate world or at your job, you're going to get ahead. But it's really, really tough because, you know, at every level, there is a cap, right? And you're, you're, you can only sell so much of your personal value in society, period. And when it comes to selling on Amazon, you're, you're not trading time for money. You're trading products for profits. And is there a limit to that? Not really, because like I said, it, there's billions of products and you just got to find a small percentage of that. And even that small percentage of them that are profitable are in the millions. So, you know, when you put it like that, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, I have... Two questions. So what yeah. is the best thing about working for yourself, selling online, selling on Amazon, all of that? And what is the worst thing about being a business owner and it can't be taxes? <laughs> okay. So I think, I think the best thing is being able to own your time, like being able to decide what you want to do whenever you want. Like if I want tomorrow, I can just clear off my entire agenda and do nothing. Good luck doing that at your corporate job, you know, unless you call in sick. But again, there's a cap to sick days and there's only so much of that game you can play. The way that my business is structured now, I can not work for months and it'll still keep generating. You know, I would just have to figure out a way to make my purchases at some time during the day. Once in a while, it doesn't even have to be every day. And if I really needed to, I could outsource that. I could hire a high level manager to do it. I just haven't done it yet. So that's the best part. It's really being able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, without having to ask permission and having the resources to do it with, right? So if I wanted to go to Spain tomorrow, I could, like I literally could. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, the worst thing, it's the ramp up period. I think that if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you know, getting through that period where you're not, where you're being the fool, like I mentioned earlier, where you don't know what you're doing, that could be nerve wracking and stressful. And uh, ultimately, you know, a lot of people can't get past that. The first, you know, period when you're trying to get things figured out, I think that's the worst part of being an entrepreneur. But I think that once you're there, it's great. Yeah, so many people are scared to fail that they don't even ever start and it's like you have you're going to fail but it's not a total failure because you're going to learn so much by failing and like making mistakes so you have to kind of get over that initial part and then the other part that people um can't make it past is just the fact that it takes a while for amazon to pay you it's going to take a couple months before you start to see any like real money back and that is not always um yeah what so like go into it with experience <laughs> I have, I have pretty good data on that and it could be anywhere between six to eight weeks when you're first starting out. I mean, yeah, you'll see profit right away, right? Like you'll buy something for 10 and sell it for 35 and you'll, after fees and everything, you'll probably see around eight or $9 profit, but you won't get it back for at least two weeks after you sell it. So when you consider the entire cycle, like you figured out what to buy, you bought it, you shipped it in, it took 10 days to check in, and then it took another 10 days for it to get distributed to the other warehouses, and then it sold, and then the money was put on hold by, for two weeks by Amazon before you got paid, and then you got paid. That's how long it takes to get your money back. So that's when yeah. you're gonna see your profit. And in between that time, you could also make a lot of mistakes, and those mistakes make that profit disappear. So you're absolutely right. Um, you have to make sure that you're able to, you know, make the money and then not make the mistakes that make that money go away. Cause they'll go away pretty quick. 
what are some of the tools and softwares that you use in like for your Amazon business? Cause like, I know you do online arbitrage. Are you manually doing it or do you use things like tactical arbitrage? Yeah. So I use, I use a combination of tools. Like I use tactical arbitrage. I use rev seller and, and I use Keepa, right? Keepa is like the, the standard for Amazon sellers. What I find is that most people simply don't know how to use these tools uh, in the most efficient way possible. Um, you know, tactical arbitrage for me, it's amazing for other people. It's horrible. They spent a whole hundred dollars and never made a cent. And it's totally understandable because they weren't ready for it at the time. That could be one thing Two, um, you know, it's garbage in garbage out. You know, if you filter things incorrectly, or if you give it the wrong parameters or you're looking in the wrong place, again, you can look through. 100,000 unique items to try to find deals, but if it's not the right time for that store, it's all gonna be garbage. So it just depends what you do. I mean, Amazon is all about making hundreds of micro decisions a day for profit. And if you don't have the right tool stack in place and the right process to go back and forth between three or four different tools, you know, that decision that should take you six seconds could take you an hour. So I hear people all the time saying, I looked for hours and I wasn't able to find anything. And I think, wow, I looked for 15 minutes and I found 30 things. <laughs> so it really is just down to a skills gap. That's all it is. Using the tools correctly makes a huge difference. I have bought uh, tactile arbitrage. Well, I know the first time I bought it, I, like you said, didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't really find anything. And then it wasn't until I really dug in and like got to know how it works that I finally started to find things. Um, but even still, I can tell I'm only scratching the surface on what it is. So it's like anything in life. You really have to keep at it and keep doing it. And you're only going to get better the more you do it. This question, I normally ask it, what would you advise to a seller who wants to get started? But since you are kind of taking existing sellers and growing them to their next stage of business, what would you give advice to anyone who is already selling and wants to grow their business more? You have to be, you have to be, you have to know enough to be able to innovate. So by that, I mean, you have to have done the repetitions of the boring actions long enough that you're able to innovate. So I always laugh when I hear people saying, you know, I just broke $5,000 a month. I need to get a VA now. And it's like, I'm sorry, you don't need a virtual assistant. You need to get better at this. You need to get so good at this that you can come up with creative ways of doing things differently and better. So if you're already an existing seller, you need to get better. Like you just need to invest in yourself. You need to learn how to do better searches. You need to learn where to look and when to look better. You know, it's all about the skills that you bring into this. And on Amazon, I really believe that the skills that you bring into this, right, add up over time. But the skills that you add to, to what you already have really produce a disproportionate result. Meaning that, you know, if you have three skills and you add them together, it equals three. But if you add that fourth skill, it's not one plus one plus one plus one equals four. It's, you know, it's one plus one plus one plus one equals ten. So the results that you get out of adding additional skills to your Amazon skill set, you know, really makes the difference between, you know, making $10,000 a month or making $10,000 a day. And it, it really is that, you know, some of the guys that you see that are selling eight, $10 million a year, they've got those additional skills and they didn't come for free. They went out and got them. You know, they went out to workshops they met they they networked with the right people at the right level right they invested in software to take them to the next level they invested in consultants to help them grow to the next level so it's always something nothing really comes for free you know you have to pay you know freedom comes at a tax right and that tax is either going to be financial you know physical or intellectual like you have to dig deep and you have to make the you have to put in the effort like you've built your business to the point where it will work without you working on it, but that's only to a thing. So with Amazon, you still have to work at it, whether that's a couple hours or a whole week of it. But the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And I think um, 
people really want it to be a get rich quick thing. And it's just not, it's going to take time and effort and learning, just like you said. Yeah, it, it is not a get rich quick scheme. It is a get rich scheme if you do it long enough. I'm convinced of that. Yeah. Because the Amazon space is so rich, right? Like you can start with retail and then get into like, you know, online and then wholesale and then private label. You can get into a lot of different things. You can even get into, you know, I think people are now promoting products using, you know, short form content and Amazon is paying them. So that's a whole new avenue of revenue for a lot of people that was never there before. Uh, I know people that have gotten into commercial real estate using their Amazon cash flow. So now they have warehouses, they have prep centers. Uh, you know, I know people that have gotten Airbnbs because of it. And, you know, it, it it wasn't just Amazon that did it. It was really their ability to expand into different areas within the space that, you know, has allowed them to really explode financially. So, it you know, you, you just have to make decisions along the way again. Instead of making a micro decision of whether or not you should buy this product for this amount of profit, it's like, should I invest in this piece of commercial real estate that I can offer prep centers for? So, it, it, you know, again, it's all ba back down to make, being able to make decisions. Yep. So I know that you have some um, offerings for business owners, Amazon business owners who want to grow their businesses. Where can people find you and what are you offering? So we, we have a program for Amazon sellers that want to take their business to the next level. So essentially what we do is we help you with education. So we help you get to that level by training you on very specific things. And I primarily focus around sourcing. A lot of people think they know how to source products, but the reality is that they don't because you don't know what you don't know. So we get into really a multi-dimensional framework of how to source products and how to find profits just about anywhere we look. And then what we do is we give you the skills, right? So once we give you the skills, we give you the systems to be able to be able to operate at that level, because it's one thing to be selling 100, 150 items a week and then growing that to 2000 items a week or 5000 items a week is a whole different game. So you need to be able to process that. So we connect you with the right systems to be able to do that and reconcile everything and making sure that things don't get lost. And that's really, once you have that, that's when the freedom really kicks in. So what we do is we we offer this, you know, on a, on a platform where sellers can have direct access to other sellers that are at this level, including myself, to be able to get through the pain points that they're kind of stuck at. Amazon is a series of bottlenecks. So once you solve the source, the sourcing problem, you're going to have a problem with processing. You know, once you're processing a lot of items, you're going to have a quality management problem. So you got to so solve for that. You're eventually and ev inevitably going to have a funding problem. So again, you need to source and find a solution for that. And we cover all of that in this program. So it's called the reseller engine. And uh, you can find it on our website, go.resellerengine.io. And this is where you're going to be able to see a landing page that will give you a, a really quick explanation of how it works and how we're going to be able to help you. And of course, we provide a private community to be able to ask questions on demand and be able to get responses to really difficult challenges within the Amazon space. Awesome. I'll be sure to link all this in the show notes for those of you who want to check it out. So you can just click on it and you don't have to remember that URL. Um, thank you so much. This was really insightful. And now I'm like, going to go check that out because I could definitely, I'm ready to grow. I got a little warehouse building out there. It's almost ready. I'm ready to grow my business as well. So thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast and came away with it with some action items to help grow your Amazon business. I know I did. If you want to check out Pedro's offerings, of course, the link is in the show notes, so you can just go ahead and click right there and check it out for yourself. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, Your Selling Podcast, wherever you're listening, or check it out on YouTube to watch it in video form. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, remember, you can reach me at Your Selling Podcast on Instagram, or just send me an email, podcast at yoursellingguide.com. Until next week, happy sourcing.